Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk about SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID, and what is the difference between that and normal RAID. So let's get started. So Synology Hybrid RAID, or just SHR, has actually been around for a while. I think it's been more than two years since Synology first adopted it on their NAS platform, and it's pretty much available on all of their NAS devices, even the ones that use pretty crappy CPUs, like a few ARM V7s in the DS216J and stuff like that. Um, in the long and short of it, SHR, or Synology Hybrid RAID, is their own proprietary version of what you know is largely regarded as RAID technology. Now, RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks or, if you're old, old school, redundant array of inexpensive disks. Now, RAID was originally created because a lot of hard drives were very small indeed, and larger hard drives cost a great deal more money. So what they did is they would combine the, array, um, the available storage on multiple drives to create one super volume. And this worked out a little bit more cost effective and often improved performance. On top of that, one of the other major benefits of RAIDing, if you move away from that single, ray, single drive architecture, what you can do is if you've got data across a bunch of drives, what RAID can do is save you from hardware failure and inevitably the loss of your data. So if, you're, if the data you're putting on your NAS is incredibly important, mission critical, uh, almost you know irreplaceably valuable and by that I don't just mean it's got pictures of diamonds but I mean it's pictures of your kids that you can't replace no insurance is going to pay out for that now what a RAID does is if you've got say two hard drives um, it will enable you to have copies duplicates or something called redundancy of your storage so for example in a two bay device um, a common RAID would be RAID 1 that's two drives that are cloning one another so you have two exact, you have two drives with a copy of one another. So if one of your drives dies, you know this hardware can do, or your your data is safe. But RAID one is so basic, and there are other RAID levels that have grown from the simplistic systems of RAID zero and RAID one. And by the way, RAID zero just combines all of it into one giant drive. Um, uh, what SHR does is SHR gives you the same ability as standard RAID with a few little bonuses. So before we really talk about those bonuses, how about we talk about what is uh, the most common RAID level for those bigger boxes? And that would be RAID 5, RAID 6. RAID 5 and RAID 6 are kind of the go-to, particularly in, the, in, the, in like enterprise level circles, but now more home users are buying 4-bay NASs, that RAID 5 and RAID 6 has become increasingly popular. What it is, is say you've got four drives, a four-bay device, da 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 da. Now, in a RAID 5 environment, what happens is, every time data is written to the drive, just imagine it as a sweep of data being written, data is written across those first three drives. So it's one giant drive you're seeing, and data is written across the first three drives, and on the last drive, it doesn't write that data. What it does is put something called parity. Parity is kind of like a blueprint of the data that's been written on the other drives in this wave. So you have three drives with actual live data and the last one with a little blueprint of the data that's on those three so far. When the next wave of, write, um, of writing the data comes along, same thing happens, but this time the parity skips to a new drive and the data is written on the other three. This continues with every wave of data and each time the parity jumps to the next drive along. The result is that if one of your drives fails, say drive four fails there, not only have you got data still on those first three drives, but the system can rebuild the data that was lost on that fourth drive, utilizing the parity on the remaining drives. And the result is your data is protected. And that is a RAID 5. In essence, a RAID 6 does exactly the same thing, but with two drives of parity. Now, what is the difference between that and SHR? Well, actually precious little. Um, and an SHR and SHR2, so RAID 5 and RAID 6 respectively, the data is still written in that same way. But because of Synology's proprietary RAID system, you have two major advantages compared to a traditional RAID in this environment. Ad advantage one, you can remove these drives and introduce them to a new Synology system and it will pick up that RAID immediately. There's no worries about a new system not initializing or seeing that data appropriately. An SHR can be carried from, um, from Synology to Synology system. But the biggest advantage with an SHR is the fact that in an SHR you can mix the drives. In a traditional RAID volume, you cannot use different drives. So by different drives, I mean different capacities, different brands, different speeds. You can't put a WD red with a Seagate blue with an HGST Death Star. You can't do that in a traditional RAID. If you do try to construct a RAID with mixed drives, all the drives will be seen 
as the lowest drive. And by that, I mean, if one drive is one TB and the rest were six TB drives, your system will only see them all as one TB. It will see them all as the lowest denominator of those drives. In SHR, however, you can mix and match any drives you want. And although you're not going to do that from the day one, why would you do that and put mixed drives originally? You'll get a better bargain getting a rack of drives. But two to three years down the line in an SHR, maybe you get some new hard drive. Maybe some of your drives come out of warranty. Or maybe you find a good deal online and you suddenly want to replace a few drives with bigger, better, eight, 10 TB drives. In an SHR, you can introduce new drives and the system will recognize they are bigger drives and it will incorporate that into the RAID. Now, if you introduce one bigger hard drive, you don't really see much of a difference. But the minute you start including more and more bigger drives as they become available, or maybe you're um, merging from an old system and utilizing your old hard drives, an SHR will take advantage of the additional storage or the additional speeds that become available to you with those bigger and better drives, whereas a traditional RAID vo uh, volume will only see those drives, once again, as the lowest common denominator amongst them. So that's really the biggest difference between SHR and traditional RAID. Of course, there are other RAID vo volumes out there. We didn't discuss RAID 10, 50 or 60, but SHR still covers those neatly. SHR, you've really got to think in terms of RAID 5 and RAID 6. So um, although an SHR is the same as a RAID, 5, uh, a RAID 1, for example, so an SHR on two drives, it will instantly treat them the same as an RAID uh, 1 would. In an SHR equivalent with two hard drives, the, what you can do is start introducing new drives. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's only two drives to, to contend with there. Why do I care? Well, it makes upgrading to the new drives infinitely easier. So if you've got a two-bay system in a RAID 1, so a couple of drives, if you want to introduce new drives, what you end up having to do is, you know, remove one of the drives, or power it down, remove a drive, install the new drive, and the system will go, oh, we lost the drive, the RAID's in trouble, um, and it will see the new drive that you've installed, the bigger drive, and it will try to rebuild the RAID, but it will only see the new drive in whatever small size or whatever the old drive was. Then you remove the other drive, introduce another new drive, and you're going to have to start um, removing, um, uh, what's it called, partitions, on those drives as well and it's a very finickety process and it's a lot of mucking around and it does it makes a very unstable raid in the interim and the last thing you want when transferring data from old to new drives in this fashion is um, an intermittent or problematic raid now with an shr what you would do in a two bay system is once again you would introduce a new drive into bay two and yes it will say oh there's a problem with the raid and we can't find that second drive but it's not the end of the world because in this scenario it will identify that new drive in its full size and its full speed immediately. So straight away, you can see the new, if you had a four TB drive and you've introduced an eight, you can see that eight TB, hey kitty, how's it going? You can see that new eight TB drive, which is good. And then when you introduce the other eight TB after the RAID is reconfigured, there you go. You've got your two new drives, your two new eight TB drives, one or two years down the line, and you haven't had to migrate to a third party cloud back up onto another network attached drive and basically free up a crap load of storage to, for your data to live on while you make the transition from drive to drive. Ultimately, choosing an SHR is just as quick and easy as choosing a normal RAID, but it's the long-term benefits that make SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID, ever more impressive. I'd love to tell you that Synology are the only company out there to do this, but they're really not. There is actually another company that do it, and that is uh, uh, Drobo and they have their own Beyond RAID system. Very similar indeed, and exactly the same as traditional SHR as well. So Drobo and Synology are really doing you know, a big thing on this and doing better than anyone else. Sorry, I should have mentioned, there is one more advantage to SHR that is largely overlooked, um, but it's something that you'd have to be so paranoid about your data to take advantage that it's you know something I'll chuck here on the end of the video. And that is, you can create a three disc system uh, a two and three disk redundant system. So say for example you buy a four bay device, you can set up a standard um, RAID or SHR with lots of hot spares. What that means in real terms is you could have all your data on drive one and then have three more clones of that drive at all times. And if your data is so mission critical it's unreal, you've got three copies of your data in case one of the drives fails. That said, the reason I don't talk about it much on the channel, the idea of a three disk redundant um, RAID configuration, is largely because having all your eggs in one basket in one device 
It sounds, you know, having three discs of redundancy sounds good. That means you can suffer three discs worth of uh, disc failure. But having it all in one system is a dangerous game because, you know, as I say, you open all your eggs in one basket and not recommend it. But let's wrap up the video. That is the main difference between SHR and traditional RAID. I do recommend you go for SHR where it is available. And remember, SHR2 is two discs of redundancy. If you did enjoy this video or found it helpful, don't forget to click like and subscribe. It's the very least you can do and it keeps the channel supported. If you want to learn more or see more examples of RAID and some more information about this, do visit my article there on the screen in the comments at the bottom about the main difference between SHR and RAID. And it's far more detailed than this video I can give you. But thank you so much for watching. This is Tammy. She's asleep. I'm that boring. I'll see you next time.